What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Artist Reads the Bible. Today, we're going to be starting with Genesis 15. And let's see. Oh, 15 is pretty short, so we'll definitely be doing 15 and 16. I don't know about 17. Oh, yep, see, that's 17 is where it says Sarai is named Sarah. And it says, then God said to Abraham, so somewhere, well, this part, Mark of the Covenant, that's when he changes him to Abraham. Oh, somewhere in there. As usual, I got my highlighter, got my decaf java juice, and I got the living word of God. Hey, look here. That kind of almost matches my shirt, don't it? <laughs> Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said to him, Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you, and your reward will be great. But Abram replied, O sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've given me no children, a leaser of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all my wealth. You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will, be your, who will be your heir. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, Look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. Then the Lord told him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur, of the Chaldeans to give you this land as your possession. But Abram replied, O sovereign Lord, how can I be sure that I will actually possess it? Because God said so. I'll tell you so many people. The Lord told him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. So Abram presented all these things, all these to him and killed them. Then he cut each animal down the middle and laid the half side by side. He did not, however, cut the birds in half. Some vultures swooped down to eat the carcasses, but Abram chased them away. As the sun was going down, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a terrifying darkness came down over him. Then the Lord said to Abram, You can be sure that your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land where they will be oppressed as slaves for 400 years. But I will punish the nation that enslaves them. And in the end, they will come away with great wealth. As for you, you will die in peace and be buried at a ripe old age. After four generations, your descendants will return here to this land, for the sins of the Amorites do not yet warrant their destruction. After the sun went down and darkness fell, Abram saw a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch pass between the halves of the carcasses. So the Lord made a covenant with Abram that day and said, I have given this land to your descendants, all the way from the border of Egypt to the great Euphrates River, the land now occupied by the Kenites, Kenizzites, Cadmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Raphaites, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites, and Jebusites. That's 15. Oh, we need a little more coffee. <laughs> Going 16 here in a minute. 16, not as long as 15. Mm. Telling you, simple things in life. Mm. I haven't done it in a while. I need to do it. Uh, we got these nicer we call it patio chair deck chair i don't know what you call it they swivel and rock and uh i'll sit out there and i got my little ottoman i'll put my feet up on and i'll just sit out there and we got wind chimes a gentle wind they'll ring every now and then and you know they're nice not like the ones she used to have it just ding 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 ding, ding. oh my gosh they get going with the wind you couldn't hear on a phone or anything these sound very uh 
That sound like church bells or something. It's just don don you know, it's like, mm, that's kind of cool. But I sit out there and I just watch the birds and the butterflies and the wind in the trees and I'll look at the flowers we have on the deck and look up at the sky and the cloud formations and just sit out there and drink my coffee and and just revel in God's majestic wonder, you know, all these things that he created. And it's just, if you sit back and you look, it, you'll realize just how beautiful everything is. You know, I'm an artist, but I don't come nowhere near to God. I mean, God's level of art is just blows my mind, you know. It just, he's the best artist there ever has been. I mean, he's the creator of everything. And it's, I mean, if you actually sit and just, you know, don't worry about your day, don't worry about tomorrow, don't worry about what happened the day before, just forget about your worries, grab you up an iced tea or a cup of coffee, a glass of water, whatever you want, whatever your choice of drink is, and just sit out on your back deck, your porch, wherever, and just just look. Just look at the trees, look at the bushes, the flowers, the birds, the different animals. We've got squirrels that come up, and I'll watch how they run and how they navigate to get over to the feeders and stuff, and it just it amazes me. You know, the... the you can see the intelligence in these little creatures and it just, it fascinates me. And I, I could sit out there and watch them for hours. Well, I have sat out there and watched them for hours, you know, and I'll sit out there sometimes and talk, just talk to God, you know, not so much in a prayer type of way, but just, you know, telling him how beautiful things he made was or is, you know, and just thanking him for allowing me to see such beautiful things but it's sometimes it's simple things in life and I think a lot of times we forget that you know we always strive to find beauty and, and well I'm guilty of this of clothes I mean hello um cars houses you know stuff like that um and sometimes we forget about stuff God created that's right in front of our faces. Us, each other, you know, how beautiful we are that he created. You know, the tree and everything I mentioned beforehand, you know. We forget sometimes. And if you just sit back and relax and just really take notice, you'll find enjoyment in very simple things. And it really is nice sometimes. Mm. Now let's get on 16. The birth of Ishmael. Now Sarai, which ends up being Sarah. Abram's wife, which ends up being Abraham, had not been able to bear children for him. But she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, The Lord has pre prevented me from having children, go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened 10 years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarai, with contempt. Then Sarai said to Abram, This is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms, and now that she's pregnant, she treats me with contempt. The Lord will show who's wrong, you or me. Abram replied, Look, she is your servant, so deal with her as you see fit. Then Sarai treated Hagar, Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a, beside a spring of water in the wilderness. Along the road to Shur, the angel said to her, Hagar, Sarai's servant, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she, she replied. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. 
And the angel also said, You are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Boy, I got a story to tell you after this. It kind of sound like me. Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord, who had spoken to her. She said, You are the God who sees me. She also said, Have I truly seen the one who sees me? So that well, so that well was named Bir Lahai Roy, which means well of the living one who sees me. It can still be found between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar gave Abram a son, and Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. Hmm. We'll stop there at 15-16. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. And until next time, y'all, please, please, please be good to each other. I love each and every one of y'all, and I'll bring you something again real soon.